So I'm here at the obelisk, which is actually the start of the Great North Walk. See it there? It's actually the uh, first official zero marking milestone for measurements for kilometers or miles back then when it was first uh, set in Sydney. And from here, I'm going to go down there behind me to um, Circular Quay and get on a ferry and go under the Sydney Harbour Bridge and uh, pick up on the other side of the harbour and continue the walk. It says uh, this obelisk was erected in Macquarie Place in 1818 to record that all the public roads leading to the inter interior of the colony are uh, measured from, from it. Lieutenant Macquarie Esquire, Governor. So we're starting from zero miles and let's go on a walk. Start, I guess, on the other side of the harbour for the uh, Great Wall North, Great North Walk. So, which off so, uh, Valencia Street walks Hunters Hill. Uh, apparently, I'm supposed to go up the uh, path here and turn left onto the Point Road. This is the first uh, marker point on the track. Uh, the goat paddock at the top of Dale Street, uh, just opposite Woolwich Pub, which looks like it's closed down to be honest. But my uh, my trek's going this way along the footpath, so I think I'm just going to keep going. I'm running a bit late. Appropriately, I need to head up this way. The next point on the marker, or the destination to where it's going to next, it is called Kelly's Bush. So I found it. Kind of feel like I'm home. So this is inside Kelly's Bush area. I actually saw the sign just down there for the pointer and directions to go on the Great North Walk. Um, I've just come to the top of this little hill here. There's a sign, information sign, it says Kelly's Bush site of the world's first green ban, as in green strip area protected uh, in 1967. This last piece of bush along the Parramatta River with its ancient relics, wildflowers and bush tracks leading down rocky cliffs to the waterfront where children played for generations was for sale. But then uh, A.V. Jennings, a person, took a two year lease option to purchase it and built a home here uh, and then the battlers for Kelly's Bush created an organization to try and protect it for any further development. And you can see on the sign here, there's protesters and uh, families going out on picnics and stuff like that. So it's a bit of a significant area. There's a few other signs around here. Let's go read what this one says. Celebrate the 25th anniversary of the world's first green band, Kelly's Bush. 1971. So this part of the walk can be a bit confusing. We're in suburbia and there's street signs and different arrows and stuff. But these markers down here, this is the Great North Walk marker. It's actually there just in the right places. So you can see uh, where you need to turn, where you need to go ne next. So I need to go left here. It's actually uh, the notes from Wild Walks actually has a lot of information and tells you exactly all the steps and it's been spot on so far otherwise it would have got lost so we'll just keep following those markers it really is a very beautiful area to go walking around these suburbs it's clearly a very affluent place where there's a lot of a uh, lot of money and harbour side views i'm not sure if you can see the water in the background there but that's sydney harbour and there's private laneways and very luxurious cars and homes and beautiful gardens and things like that. So it's a very picturesque kind of walk. Um, 
I think I'm supposed to be going this way. It'd be good to get into a bit more um, natural environment soon, but uh, I guess this is the start of what's supposed to be uh, a 250 kilometer walk up to Newcastle. I'm not going to do all that today or start it all today, but um, this is the first stage. So it's interesting to have a look around. Look at this. This is just a terraced house, front landscape with uh, Sydney Harbour ocean, uh, uh, Sydney Harbour views there in the background. Private little walks. Actually, I'm supposed to go down this way, so I almost missed that marker here. So down that way straight towards the water. I feel like I'm walking through someone's backyard. It's actually so quiet here. There's a tennis court just up there overlooking the water. Someone's uh, private pergola barbecue area, I guess. I'm supposed to walk across the grass here just in front of the water side. Kind of feel like I need to be sneaking a little bit. So I've been winding in and out of uh, the suburban streets and down to the harbour side here. I've just come across this beautiful old church and a church garden area. I'm sure it would be um, a very, very pretty and beautiful venue for things like uh, weddings and whatever else. Beautiful old building. walking through someone's backyard by the look of it. <laughs> so just walking through that alleyway and found a beautiful little antiques, ivy alley antiques, living gifts. It's a very crafty little back entrance and that's the way to get to it. Uh, it's part of the National Trust uh, building. Apparently the family that owned this cottage were just a traditional tradesman kind of family with a husband and wife and four kids. But this house stayed in that family from 1871 to 1984. We just found another old interesting building. This is the Masonic Temple, Masonic Hall in Hunters Hill. It's a pretty ominous looking building. I'm sure there was some interesting discussions in there. Far from the Masonic Temple, which is two doors that way, is the Hunter Hill Town Hall. It's a beautiful old building. I think there's actually, uh, I was reading the walk notes, it's supposed to be a really old, uh, very small pharmacy just up here as well, so I'll keep my eye out for that. So this on the other side of the road there is uh, the old little pharmacy, it's got a date 1890 on it. Very small little building. Looks like it might be attached to the house behind it though as well. So this walk along here, down near the waterfront, is uh, called the Three Patriots Walk and there's an information sign just here at the start of the walk. It says the Three Patriots of Hunter Hill, local citizens who contributed to the Federation of Australia. So uh, George R. Dibbs, uh, Charles Generet, and Anglo Thornaggy. Keep going this way. I thought this was stopping to uh, look at and make mention of. This uh, plaque here in front of this tree says, this Gallipoli Lone Pine commemorates the 100th anniversary of the landing at Gallipoli on the 25th of April, 1915, to remind us of all of those who served, those who suffered, and those who did not return, lest we forget. Got that it's actually spring and that means it's magpie swooping season and I just got swooped just there by there's a magpie in the tree there so I put my sunglasses on my head backwards and hoping that uh, he doesn't follow me <laughs> I don't see anymore 
and I don't get my glasses destroyed. Okay, I'm a little bit nervous now. Yep, yep, he's following me, he's just up there. If I do this, then I'll be able to see him coming behind me, hopefully. I'll look in the camera. Problem is, there's a tree-lined street and there's going to be a lot more around here. Okay, anyway, so it looks like I've got to Baronia Park. <laughs> I'm looking, still looking for the magpie. But this is Baronia Park. It's where my, uh, the end of the first section of the hike is. So I'm going to stop here. Looks like there's some places to sit down. I'll have something to eat. Try not to get attacked. I see you. Stop following me. Look, dude, what? What do you want? I'm just gonna sit here, okay? Bloody hell. My friend Claude the Magpie is going to stay with me for lunch now and uh, we'll keep each other company. So I'm just going uh, past Baronia Park now, just over there. Uh, I got swooped by at least two magpies and saw two other people get swooped by magpies as well. So I'm trying to give it a bit of a wide berth and stay on the uh, housing side of the park. There's a few less trees and I'll stay near the road. But uh, I'm supposed to go down here now to the end and so down to, I think it's a uh, Wayne Cove River. And then it's about uh, two and a bit hours uh, walking uh, pretty much west along the river to uh, up to North Ride. I'm, I'm looking behind me, I'm a bit worried about more magpies I haven't been able to spot yet. I've got a feeling the rest of this video is going to be about me avoiding magpies or spotting them and trying to just keep tabs on them so I don't get hit. So I just came down from the road up near Baronia Park and found a sign that said access to the Great North Walk, so this is where it will continue from. I think I probably took a little bit of a shortcut and didn't go actually through the section of uh, Baronia Park, but I saw just too many magpies there waiting to find a victim. So I'm hoping that I'm in a bit of scrub now. It's actually nice to be in a bit of natural environment and out of uh, suburbia. But uh, I'm hoping the trees give me a bit of cover and <laughs> there's no magpies. Sounds a bit strange, but it's nice actually to be uh, doing what's probably more actually like a hike than just uh, walking through people's backyards. That's the first section of it done. This is the start of a second section from Baronia Park through to North Ride. So this section of the walk is uh, definitely a bit more in a natural environment and the walk notes I was reading said that it's a combination or variation of uh, dry eucalypt forest and uh, some access to some mangrove swampy areas and I can see even just down in there like we're actually at the water level now it's just there and along the water's edge is a whole uh, area of mangroves. So we've got some boardwalk coming up just up here that will be going out over the mangroves, I think. Yeah, it's really nice.
So I've just come to this sign that's uh, like an introduction to the Great North Walk. Uh, the spirit of discovery and it's got some mile markers over here on this side and it says uh, Newcastle that way 237 kilometers so that's uh that's what the end outcome of all this is but back where we've come from Sydney Cove says 13 kilometers that way so that's what we've traveled today so far part of that was by the ferry obviously but um last probably um, period of time the majority of the time was on uh, hiking just reading some of this sign I'll just read some of it out to you it's pretty interesting it says one of the features of the Great North Walk is its diversity it passes through many different environments from Sydney Harbour through Lane Cove which is the area we are now to Lake Macquarie and to the Newcastle coastline the walk also provides access through Brisbane Water National Park and a network of impressive state forests and natural resources so this is where we're going to go next. It should be about two hours thereabouts to our next uh, junction point, which is uh, North Ride and uh, the train station. So here we are going out on the boardwalk, out over the mangroves. Reminds me of a bit up around the Daintree uh, rainforest. Obviously a bit different climate. Not sure if you can hear that in the background, but there's a gang of kookaburras on the other side of the uh, waterway here. I'm just up on top of an escarpment. They're going crazy, uh, calling out to each other. Um, laughing, I think they call it. So, it's hard to believe we're only like 10, 15 K out of Sydney City. Feels like we are you know, quite remote here in the bush. And now that I've come down around that that hill, there's um, down through the mangroves, there's really there's no sign of people or houses or infrastructure. Occasional 747 flying overhead, but the rest of it is just uh, bush. So the information sign is back there saying this is a coastal wetlands area. First thing with life, salt marsh equals diversity. And suddenly you come out of all the trees and the bush and scrub and realize you are actually still in Sydney city suburbs. I think they're playing uh, baseball over there on the other side of this hill mound. I'm just coming out of that baseball park and I get to go across a walk bridge over Lane Cove River with ducks. Diversity is certainly something that they've uh, got pretty well down on this hike because now I'm walking on the side of the highway or the freeway actually and I think I'm about to do a loop back around and cross over the road bridge over Lane Cove River. I'm still going the right way.
hard to see. Found a bush turkey. I think that's your nest, mate, isn't it? Good job, look how big it is. It's a great spot too. I love coming to clearings like this. Now I have no idea which way I'm supposed to go. It's just a flat open space. I could go down that side of this big rock or over that side. They're two totally different directions. Might backtrack, maybe I missed a marker somewhere. Back in this way. Oh, hang on, there we go. So, off down to the right. That was good thinking. Well done. It's pretty cool. So I've definitely missed another marking sign somewhere just in that short space between when I was talking to a minute ago. So I can't really go down there. But I'm pretty sure I need to go somewhere this way. I will point this way before. So again, I'll backtrack and see what I find. Yep, found it. That way. The opposite direction. Okay, so I've just come back across to that weir because I figured that I actually had no idea where I am. And I was trying to oh, read on the walk notes and I can't see any of the details. This is Lane Cove National Park. Well, that's a big bloody park, but I don't know where, which part I'm in. So I'm going to head back out of the park where I saw a bus stop, try and figure out what my actual location is. and how I get from here to the train station. I realized I got way off track. Missed the junction where I was supposed to follow the instructions from the walk notes to lead to the train station, but I just kept going on the, the Great North Walk, following the markers, thinking I'd end up near the train station automatically. But that's not how it works. So I backtracked a bit, reread the walk notes and looked at the map on uh, Google Maps and then realized I could take a shortcut through this uh, cemetery, which is actually really beautiful in Lane Cove, just on right Lane Cove River. So I'll take a shortcut through the cemetery here and end up on uh, Delhi Road, not far from the station. It's actually a beautiful place. I think I've been here before. Ah. I'm sure I was here for somebody's uh, funeral. Wow. I think the way out's this way. Exit this way. I don't remember who it was, but I know that I've been here before. Oh, because I remember the uh, reception building.
So, let's see if I can find this train station. So, back to the range of diversity in this walk. I'm now on uh, the way to the station in North Ryde, and this area here is all government buildings and um, corporate business parks. So, I just went past the Department of Institute uh, of uh, Industry, Innovation, and Science, and uh, in the same building was the National Measurements Institute. And here is companies like Oracle and the CSIRO buildings. These guys are motorbikes. This is Australian CSIRO, the inventors of Wi Fi. I made it, North Ride train station. It's now about 5 o'clock, so I'm about on schedule. That took me 5 hours. I'm gonna go get a train and go home. Bye bye.